Great Barrier Reef is uh, a unique marine ecosystem on, on a world scale. It's 2,300 kilometres long, 900 plus islands, nearly 3,000 individual reefs and nearly every type of reef known in the tropical world is represented on the Great Barrier Reef. So it's unique and it's a huge system. We've got a huge tourism industry, close to five billion dollars per year from tourism. Many people around Australia and overseas come here, so it's, it's large and it's valuable. People who visit the reef, they're often, they talk about, you know, spectacular account, encounters with whales and turtles. It's just the most amazing place. Mangrove communities, the seabirds, it's very important for, for dugongs. It's just a vital part of this whole coastline. Um, people either make their living off it, or they just like to know it's there and it's healthy. It's a place where we go and we fish, you know, we take our kids and we go swimming and, you know, we go out and walk in the mud flats and flat flats and get cockles. And it's something that um, we feel very strongly about. Trying to put so much into a couple of sentences about how much this, this country, this hot water country means to us is very hard. Um, but uh, it's everything, I suppose. It's part of us and we're part of it. It is an invisible uh, connection and understanding, I suppose, between us and the animals and the environment that is so strong. We're starting to really start to take our rightful place as manager of this, uh, of this beautiful area and that's where we belong. I think that World Heritage listing for the Great Barrier Reef gives it a, an absolute recognition of, it, of its status as a natural wonder. Uh, it lets us uh, both promote those, those values and those beauties, but it also gives us a responsibility to make sure that we protect them to the highest level uh, so that we do meet the World Heritage obligations. The complexity that we understand of the reef's biodiversity and its ecosystem um, is, is mirrored by the complexity of influences that man's having on that system. So these sprinklers work really good. Don't get, don't get caught up with ants or anything? No, no, that's good. Sugar cane and bananas are the two major agricultural crops. They're by far the bigger employer. Clint's invested over $100,000 on this farm to change his fertigation and irrigation practices to um, get the max, maximum benefit out of his fertiliser and optimise his water use. You can see how the water down here has actually slowed right down. Um, that gives it uh, an opportunity for sediments to fall out. And what that means is you obviously, you care about the reef and, and the water quality that leaves your farm because water quality is the main contributor to the health of the reef. The World Heritage listing for the Great Barrier Reef means a lot. It, it, it makes you feel proud to be part and parcel of the landscape up here. It also does have some uh, conditions on that as well that we have to recognise the fact that um, the practices we have here impact upon that. Marine spatial planning and management is the fundamental thinking behind how the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority does its job. So what we are doing is trying to ensure the long-term protection and sustainable use of the Great Barrier Reef region through operating a marine park. Partnerships are absolutely vital. There are so many different users, stakeholders, landholders, and it's impossible for it to happen without partnerships. Parks and wildlife ranges are out on the water day to day. They, they are essentially eyes and ears of what's going on on the reef. Uh, they're the frontline compliance officers that are uh, looking for, for people that aren't doing the right thing, but they're also the, the front line in talking to those users that do do the right thing and, and helping educate them about the values of the reef and the importance of, of it and how we can look after it. Oh, it takes that. It's a very large and complex system um, and therein lies the, uh, the attraction for scientists, the challenge for scientists to answer some of the really big questions such as climate change, such, such as the impacts of, of uh, uh, run off into the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. And so uh, through government incentives, through organisational leadership, 
what we've seen is a, a real um, bringing together of expertise. And only by doing that, having that partnership approach, are we ever going to answer the really complex questions that are, are, are at our forefront right now. My husband has been a, a professional line fisherman for the past 25 years. I think the Great Barrier Reef is extremely important to us uh, simply because it's our livelihood, it's our lifeblood. The sustainable management practices such as uh, fish enclosures, there's a third of the Great Barrier Reef uh, that is under zoning for closures. Uh, there's also spawn enclosures, maintaining fish stocks uh, and the biodiversity of species uh, in the Great Barrier Reef. There's been several really important changes, getting the tourism operators to be, uh, become partners in uh, making sure that we protect and uh, can showcase the, the reef in pristine condition. Which one does that one go in? Great. Yeah. The students really do want to become reef guardians. This is an amazing opportunity for the students to actually make the connection between what we do here at school does Im impact on the reef. They get to see the amazing amount of biodiversity. Within the Great Barrier Reef there's approximately um, 70 traditional owner groups. From a management perspective it's really important to recognise that traditional owners do want to get engaged in managing their country. If you want to measure where we are... I can see it if it's done properly and, and effectively and, and with the full cooperation of traditional owners it can value add to the whole the whole experience uh, of you know people coming to this country and seeing uh, the GBR and experiencing what it has to offer. I think uh, Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people add on the on the saltwater estate can just value add to the whole experience. The challenge for everyone moving forward is how we get that equitable balance between needing community viability, um, having social integrity and, and social cohesion within a community while at the same time generating the environmental outcomes uh, that, that, we, that we want in this region. I think, you know, it's a really tricky uh, type rope to walk about, you know, development as opposed to protection and management. But, you know, we know that with some of the processes that are taking place currently in Australia that there is opportunities to actually walk the line and to give benefit to both sides. And that means connection to society and economy. So we live in a pretty special place. I'm passionate about the reef and I just think it's such an amazing natural wonder of the world. People just cannot get the kind of experiences that you can get here anywhere else in the world. For future generations, uh, the Great Barrier Reef is just such a special, fantastic, unique resource that um, we just don't want anything awful to happen to. But really, its World Heritage status comes from its natural values. In fact, I love the expression, the outstanding universal value. How good is that?